Hi everyone, welcome back to Innovation Strategy. Today we're going to learn about patterns and innovation dynamics that help us better anticipate technological disruption, improvements in technological performance, and technology adoption. People often think of innovation as being unpredictable, like rolling dice or getting struck by lightning. But innovation isn't really that unpredictable. It's not like clockwork. But it does have reliable patterns we can use to make predictions. We're going to study three important ones here. Technology S-curves of performance, technology cycles, and the diffusion of innovation and adopter categories. If you graph technology performance against effort, it often shows an S-shaped curve. This is because in the beginning, improvement is really difficult. You may not have great information or great inputs, and you make a lot of mistakes. On the other hand, as you accumulate information and inputs, improvement can start to accelerate as your effort has a bigger payoff. Then at some point, the S-curve tends to flatten out again as you approach the limits of the technology. You've solved all the easy and obvious problems, and now improving the technology starts to get really hard again. We can analyze the shape of the curves to predict when one technology will pay off more than another. For example, in this graph, technology 2 has a steeper S-curve and in the long run will pay off more for each unit of effort. In this graph, technology 3 starts at a higher performance level than technology 1 or technology 2. It's interesting to note that in most of the period, technology 1 and technology 2 will have higher payoff to effort, but at some point, technology 3 will have higher payoff. It will create a discontinuity. This leads to our second pattern. Technology cycles. Anderson and Tushman and Utterback and Abernathy showed that technology often flows in a cycle. First, a technological discontinuity will usher in an era of ferment where designs will compete for dominance. Once a dominant design has emerged, we enter the era of incremental change where many firms are competing to improve the dominant design. The era of ferment thus tends to correspond to that slow initial period of the S-curve, and the era of incremental change corresponds to that steep improvement part of the S-curve, because even though the individual changes are incremental, they're accumulating rapidly by many different firms. Now let's talk about patterns in the diffusion of innovation. Suppose one person convinces her friends to adopt an innovation, and they convince their friends to adopt an innovation, and they convince their friends to adopt an innovation. In a social referral process like this, the number of adopters will increase exponentially until most of the market has been reached. After the bulk of the market for the innovation has been tapped, the number of new adopters starts to decline, so you get this curve with a hump in the middle. Note that the x-axis now is time. Everett Rogers noted that there were differences in people who adopted an innovation over its life cycle. The first 2.5%, which he termed innovators, tended to be adventurous, comfortable with risk, and had access to substantial financial resources, like Richard Branson sailing his hot air balloon around the world. The second category, the next 13.5%, are called early adopters. These people are better integrated into their social system and have the greatest potential for opinion leadership. They are avid consumers of technical information about products and services and like to have the latest and greatest thing like my son's obsession with gaming equipment. The next 34% are the early majority. These people need to believe that a product is good and reliable before adopting, but they'll still adopt slightly before the average member of a social system, like your friend who always wants to meet at the hot new cafe that everybody's talking about. The 34% after that are called the late majority. These people approach innovation with a skeptical air and may not adopt the innovation until they feel pressure from their peers. You know, like your mom getting on TikTok. The last 16% to adopt are called the laggards. They base their decisions primarily upon past experience rather than influence from the social network, and they must feel certain that a new innovation won't fail before adopting it, like my grandpa and the ATM machine. Performance curves and diffusion curves thus reflect different processes, but they're related. Only innovators would consider adopting a product that was in its early, clunky stages, and it's the rapid rise in performance on the S-curve that enables the innovation to tap the rest of the market. 
These patterns mean that we can use data to anticipate which technologies might ultimately outperform other technologies and when. These patterns also help us to get a sense of when a technology is still growing, how fast it's likely to grow, and when it will mature. Collectively, these patterns mean that the emergence of innovation and the path it takes over time isn't so unpredictable after all. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe so that you get notified when the new videos come out.